Let's all stand together tonight, if you will. Revive us again, all four verses together. We praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Revive us again. Spirit of life who has shown us our Savior and 
Welcome to church tonight. We're so honored and thankful that you're here this evening. And I've been looking forward all day to being with God's people in God's house tonight. And we're so thankful again that you're here. I trust that you've had a good week thus far and a good day today. And I've been so encouraged with the weather. Has it been near as hot as I thought it has been or would be normally during this time of year? And so I'm so grateful for that. It works out great for our, our outreach ministry. Uh, we had a great time with that, with a wonderful meal. And then getting out and telling others about the Lord. There's a big need for that. And I realize that may not be popular, but the gospel is what people need. You're not going to hear that on the news, that your favorite a news broadcaster or broadcasting station or social media outlet, whatever you want to name it, uh, they're not going to come on and say, we found the answer for our country, it's Jesus Christ. But we know it because we've got the Word of God and, and uh, we've got the advantage. We know what people need and uh, uh, God just tells us to plant the seed and water that seed and God is the one who gives the increase. I was out with Jalen tonight, me and him were making some visits together and uh, we were talking about that a little bit, you know, uh, going and doing outreach, whether you're doing it in your, with your family, whether you're doing it with your neighbor, or whether you're out on the pro, uh, church program, whatever you're doing, you know, it's Jesus likened it to us planting seed, kind of like a garden, you know, when you plant that, um, you know, when you plant that cantaloupe seed, whatever you plant, you know, when you plant that seed, you don't have a cantaloupe the next day, it takes some time, it takes some uh, time takes watering and sunshine, and it takes weeks before you see some fruit. And sometimes that's the way it is. Uh, when we plant that seed, sometimes we've got to water it. You say, oh, Pastor, you don't understand. I met somebody for the first time, and I got to lead him to Christ. Well, I believe with all my heart, somehow, somewhere, that seed was already planted before you. You just was able to see the harvest there. And uh, so that we can't get away from that concept from Scripture, that principle from Scripture plant water God gives the increase and so uh, God if we'll be faithful I believe God will continue to give the increase amen and that we have to be faithful and we have to run with patience amen and so part of our thing but let's pray and ask God for his blessings tonight we want to pray for all of our church family and uh, we want to pray for folks that are traveling we want to pray for those who are sick and so forth we'll get most of our prayer list and the end of service as we normally do. But let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God for his blessings tonight in a great way. Raise your hand tonight if you're in need of something from the Word of God tonight. And uh, I'm in need of the Word of God, fellowship with God's people. I need to get my tank filled up with spiritual gasoline. And I believe we're in the right place for it. Amen? So let's pray together. Father, we love you. Thank you for allowing us to meet together once again tonight. Thank you for your people and their faithfulness even during this summer time these summer months thank you for the ministry opportunity thank you for uh, young families bringing their children and father thank you so much for uh, the the ministry mindset the burden uh, this this uh, church this ministry of trying to reach people and be an encouragement to people thank you for the smiles thank you for the words of encouragement and uh, father i thank you for your word i pray tonight that as it's taught and preached and uh, introduced in many forms and fashions tonight through the ministries of this church. I pray that you would use it for your honor and your glory. And we'll thank you for what you do in our hearts. Uh, meet the needs of our church family tonight, whether it's online or in here, and or with us in the classroom, in the educational building. And we'll thank you for what you do tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you can remain seated, but I want you to sing out unto the Lord as Brother Holly leads us tonight in this next song. I'd 
that song that I hope that we all learn, and uh, that is we have to constantly lean and depend and trust the Lord for really every aspect of life, and it's just not a, it's just a one-time deal, right? You don't go through a situation and, and say, well, Lord, I passed that faith test. I'm done for the rest of my Christian life, and we grow. And you never get done growing. You never, there's never, there's not an end to learning. And uh, there's not an end uh, to growing in the Christian life. You just, we keep growing. God continues to give us tests to, allow, to keep us growing. And uh, so we have to learn to lean upon the Lord. And I don't know about you, but for me, it's almost like the task uh, that just, that, that could continue to come in my life, the, the test that God sends. And it seems like I have to learn that lesson over again every time that I have to trust the Lord because I want to do it myself and other things. But that's a great song to be reminded of that great truth tonight. But we have a couple announcements real quick. Let me get these to you tonight. Uh, services on Sunday. I'm looking forward to a wonderful day uh, this coming Sunday. I want to encourage you to be faithful to the house of God during the month of August. I realize that school is starting back. Uh, I realize that everybody's trying to squeeze in those last-minute vacations. I realize that it, it is busy, busy, busy. But let's put God first, and that means His church. And that means let's be faithful to the house of God during the month of August as much as possible. I realize, I realize stuff comes up, but let's do our best to make sure we put church a priority because that's where we're going to get uh, refueled and, and encouraged and help with God's people. And, uh, and you never know how God can use you to be an encouragement to somebody else. You never thought, but how God can use you. You say, Pastor, I don't even say two words when I come to church. You never know how God can use your sweet spirit and just be in your chair to be a blessing uh, to somebody sitting beside you or the aisle, uh, or the other uh, side of the aisle or something. You never know. And uh, people watch your life and look at your life, and sometimes we think, well, no, my life is not very important. No, it is. And God can use you. You don't have to say a lot of things. And uh, sometimes you say a lot, you get in trouble, like your pastor <laughs> sometimes, and uh, say too much. But anyway, uh, be here, be in your place as much as possible during the month of August. But Sunday is a very special day. It is Back to School Sunday. We've been doing this for several years. And just last year, we really, um, we just really increased the, uh, our gift cards that we give out to our young people. So every uh, school age child from kindergarten through high school that are going back to school this next semester will receive a Walmart gift card uh, uh, for $20 each, not just family, just per child. So if you have 10 kids, again, you know, that's, I don't know, how much is that? Somebody do the math, Brother Holly. Is that $400? Two hundred dollars, okay, and so that's a lot. Maybe we put a cap on this thing. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, we're gonna do it. We got plenty of gift cards to give out, and we're gonna have a great time with that. And then we're gonna pray. And uh, and I know that's not much. I know that's not gonna buy but just a pair of scissors and a ruler and a piece of paper. I realize that's not much, but we just wanna just give you something just to let you know we love you and we appreciate you and your children, your family. And so every child will get a gift card. And parents, what we're going to do with the children church and the children church workers in here, uh, take those from the kids when they leave here in the auditorium and give those to the parents, okay? If you can do that, that would be great. I know parents would appreciate that. I'll appreciate that and uh, because if not, it'll get gone, okay? And uh, tell your kids when they come to say, this is not for your toys. This is for your backpack and, and other things. And so, and so, but anyway, and then we're going to pray over them that God will protect them this year, and, and uh, we know that God, our, the kids going back to school, they need the Lord's help and God's protection, and let's pray for the teachers that teach them. Uh, you know, some of these teachers have influence on these kids for eight hours a day. That's a lot of influence, so I, I want to pray. I've been praying right now already in the last a couple days, I guess a few weeks, I guess now, and praying for my kids' teachers, and I'll be honest, I don't even know who they are. But I've been praying for them that uh, they would be a godly influence on my children. And so let's, we're going to pray for them, and uh, that will be right after the choir comes down. We're looking forward to that special Sunday. Don't forget about breakfast in the morning, or excuse me, sat, Sunday morning at 9.30 to 10. And then our adult Bible classes all across the campus, 10 o'clock. Keep that in mind, if you will, all day Sunday, 11 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Keep all that in mind, all right? Then our back-to-school lock-in. Uh, Brother Holly is excited about that this Friday, and I'm excited about that. 
and uh, coming in. I'm going to get here, Lord willing, about 10 o'clock or so and to stay till, I don't know, maybe midnight or so. And I'm looking forward to spending some time with these kids and, and drinking a lot of coffee and to stay, keep up with them. That's going to be a great, great time. I found out something that uh, I've uh, really enjoyed learning about, and that is this uh, food item called coffee beans. And uh, so any take that's what it's worth. I don't know if you eat coffee beans or not. It's kind of quiet in here, but I love uh, coffee beans, and they, they keep me going sometimes. But anyway, um, back to school lock-in this Friday. If you have any questions about that, of course, see Brother Miss Holly. And then Andrew and Mary Beth Jones will be with us Sunday, August 20th. That's not this Sunday, but next. They'll be with us the morning and evening service. You don't want to miss that. They, they are some of the sweetest people and most genuine people. I know you don't always get to be with them and so forth, but I get to go have lunch with them, and they're just like you, and they're just, uh, they're just real, genuine people, and, um, and they love the Lord. And I'm so excited to have them, and I want to encourage you to pray now for them that God would use them in a great way on Sunday, August 20th for all the services. Then our summer ladies' meeting is going to be this uh, August 31st on a Thursday evening at 7 o'clock p.m. This will be in Heritage Hall, and uh, I think my mother-in-law is the speaker, so I'll be out of state that night. No, I'm just kidding. She does a great job, and uh, I want to encourage you to, ladies to be here. I want to encourage every lady, if all possible, to come and, and be a part of that. It's about an hour, 15 minutes, hour and a half, I think, and, but you'll have a, a meal type of thing, and then a Bible study uh, from uh, my mother-in-law, and then um, and she's a pastor's wife in Galax. Great, I, I pick a lot on my mother-in-law because she picks a lot on me. But, uh, but she's a great Christian lady, and make sure you get that record, that t- this, uh, this to her. And, uh, but she's a great Christian lady, and uh, you will be encouraged, ladies, for this meeting. And they play games and have a great time. So sign up. Many have signed up already. Sign up there in the entryway, if you will. And then also uh, the Young Adult Fellowship Kayaking. This is for ages 19 to 49. This will be Saturday, August 26th. This Sunday, we'll say it's next Saturday. And so it's coming up soon. So I want to encourage you, if you haven't signed up already and you want to go, I want to encourage you to do it. I know it's a little bit of expense, but if you can't pay for that and you want to go, see me, please. And we want to make sure that you can go, okay? And so keep that in mind, if you will. And somebody asked me about this Sunday, can kids go? The answer is yes, absolutely. If your children want to go, teens or whatever, they can go. And so keep that in mind. There's some pricing there on the sign-up sheet in the entryway for that. Then one more thing, diaper drop-off for Ricky and Ashley Phillips. If you haven't got to know them, they're a sweet young couple, and uh, they're very faithful. I'm real, I, I love Ricky and Ashley and, and their little girl, Allie James. And, uh, n- yeah, did I get that right? No. Your little girl's name, Ellie, right? That one. Okay, the new one. I, that's what I meant, Ellie James. Not Ellie. What's her, what's her middle name? El, Ellie Diane. We have so many Ellies. I can't keep them all straight. And so Brandy's is going to be Ellie James. That's what I'm doing. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting that mixed up here. So Ellie James is here. Ellie Diane is over there with Ellie Monroe and Ellie Ruth right now. And so we're excited about their, their soon coming next, uh, the, the next girl. And I want to encourage you to be real good to their, this family with diapers and Amazon gift cards over here in the, in the corner. That starts on Sunday and it goes to the 20th. And so keep that in mind, if you will. Two things really quick, and we're going to stand and sing again. Two things coming up in September that I really want to keep uh, before you and on your mind, and that is our churchwide picnic and cornhole tournament. That'll be Saturday, September 16th. That's when we have the hot dogs and hamburgers. It's a really, really enjoyable time. It's just a laid-back type of thing out here in the big field. Uh, That starts at 6 o'clock, and then the cornhole tournament, that's a big deal. We always give a trophy out for the winning team there. That'll start at 5 o'clock, and so keep that in mind. We'll have a sign-up sheet soon for uh, those who want to be a part of that tournament. And then the next thing and the last thing that I want to mention tonight, and that is our revival that's coming up. And I realize it's, I think it's seven, eight weeks out right now, but it's at the end of September, but I, I don't want you to miss it. Brother Philip Moore, I was on the phone with him today. He's already got his plane ticket. He's our missionary in Utah. He's preached for us through his revivals before, and God has really used him. He is a tremendous blessing, and I don't want you to miss one night of it. Monday through Wednesday is a short short revival, and the Reigns family will be with us, 
and uh, from from uh, S- South Carolina, and uh, you don't want to miss them singing each night. It's going to be tremendous. We'll have meals prior to the service each night, so mark that on your calendars, and uh, make sure you're with us for that week, and go ahead and begin praying that God will do great things during that week of revival. All right, let's all stand together once again all over the building tonight. Brother Holly's coming to lead us. Sing out with all your heart unto the Lord tonight. Living by faith. I care not today what the morrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth for everything, and all of my worry is vain. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding. Take a moment now, fellowship, teenagers here to speak. together I know that he safely will carry me through no matter what evils be tied why should I then care though the tempest may blow if Jesus was close by my side living by faith in Jesus above trusting confide Ushers, come forward, if you will, please. We're going to pray over the offering and ask God for his blessings tonight. And Wednesday night offering always goes to what, church? Missions. missions. And let's be faithful to the missions program tonight. And it was a blessing uh, to have Chris McPike and, and his wife with us on Sunday night. And uh, I, I, I love being with missionaries and, and uh, people that are, have been called to go to a different field, whether it's somewhere in America or another country, and I got to have supper with them afterwards, and I just had a great time of fellowship with them, and, and so Lord willing, we'll be hearing a little bit from them, or more about them later, later on, and so, but let's pray over the offering, ask God for his blessings tonight over the giving. Father, we love you, thank you for this opportunity, uh, Father, to give, Father, you said in your word, you love the cheerful giver. And, Father, I believe that our church family are just that. And I pray that you would help us, uh, Father, to be faithful in this area of giving to missions. We call it faith promise, Father, in many respects because we've, we promise to give you, Father. We commit to do that on a regular weekly basis. And, uh, Father, of such and such amount. And I pray that you'd help us to be able to be faithful to that. Father, it's, it's amazing to see when we do our best, whether it's $5 or $1 or 20 or 100 or whatever it may be, a week or a month, or whatever, Father, we purpose in our heart. 
Father, to see how you bring that in as we give it. And Father, you've truly shown me, give and it shall be given. And Father, I pray that each one, each Christian, uh, in our church at least, would, would understand that principle. And if they haven't already, and Father, that we would, we would grasp that and learn from it. And Father, we'll thank you for what you do in our lives and the remaining part of the service. Again, bless each gift and giver tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. much instrumentalist beautiful song tonight take your bibles please and turn with us to the book of proverbs chapter number 29 proverbs chapter number 29 tonight and we'll continue our series of drifting this evening i trust this has been helpful to you and uh, i realize this is more of a warning series and uh but someone said an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure and I believe that, of course, to be the case. And uh, the Bible is full of that type of uh, teaching uh, that uh, we need to learn from. Proverb, Proverbs chapter 29. And uh, we're going to be using our Bibles a lot tonight. So I want you to hold them open and, and use them. And as we turn to different portions of Scripture. And uh, we're going to look, begin in verse number 22 tonight. So Proverbs chapter 29. And just one verse tonight to springboard from and to use as a base uh, to go off, but we're going to use other scripture references as well. Proverbs chapter 29, if you found your place, would you say amen? amen. Let's pray to get, excuse me, let's read this, verse 22. The Bible says, An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. Transgression, of course, could be interpreted as sin. So an angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. So let's pray once again, and then we'll get into this study tonight. Father, we love you. Thank you for your word. And I, I thank you for speaking to my heart, uh, Father, concerning this topic. And I pray that you would use me, Father, to be a blessing uh, in a great way tonight. I pray and ask that you would help me. I can do nothing apart from you. I ask that you would give me clarity of mind and the mind of Christ, and use me, Father, help me to say everything I should, and uh, nothing I shouldn't, God, my heart, mind, and spirit, and Father, please use me, I pray, and help us to be receptive of your word tonight, and, and grow spiritually as a result of it, in Jesus' name, amen. There are many unfortunate uh, situations of a believer who figuratively drifts away from God, which, of course, ultimately... Uh, causes them to no longer serve the Lord. We've made that statement almost every Wednesday night that we've taught this lesson. And uh, we, we've also mentioned that everyone has a besetting sin. I'm going to turn this thing around and uh, to where uh, it is where it should be. Uh, everyone has a besetting sin according to Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 1. Uh, we, we learned that, that everyone has a, a sin or perhaps sins that, uh, that, that that's your kind of your soft spot, that's your weak spot. And, um, and again, that can vary with so many different people. It's really none of your business what somebody else's 
weak spot is, that's between them and the Lord. And uh, perhaps a spouse could tell their other spouse what that weakness is. If you think that would help you as far as an accountability uh, asset in your home, uh, that there may be some wisdom there. Uh, but uh, ultimately, that's, that besetting sin is up to you, or it's between you and the Lord. Uh, but we've been talking about drifting and how we know and understand we cannot lose our salvation. Once we have uh, salvation, we are in Christ, and we cannot get out of Christ. Uh, there's no Bible verses that back that whatsoever. There's some verses that people, when they wrongly interpret them, come to that conclusion that you can lose it, but that's what they're doing. They're wrongly interpreting them. They're twisting them around and uh, to fit their, their, their perspective on what they think God says. But you cannot lose it. Uh, but you can, in our fellowship, drift away from God. In other words, we're just not as close to God uh, in, in that harmony and that fellowship as we once were. And you can relate that to any relationship that is distant, okay? And so we don't want to drift, right? We do not want to drift away from God. But there are things in our lives, if we're not careful, even a Wednesday night crowd, uh, that, that we can drift away from God when we allow that to get into our life. Now, we've talked about a, 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 a several different topics. Tonight, we're talking about anger. Anger. Now, we, we, saw, we just read in verse number 22... And I want you to look at it again. When an individual is an angry person, we're not just talking about getting mad, you know, periodically, uh, you know, not getting angry. Uh, we're not talking about getting angry here and there and so forth when you stump your toe or something like that. Uh, that's natural. It's part of life. Um, uh, but it is, uh, notice the verse 22, an angry man. Uh, that's, his, that's his personality. There's some people out there that are just angry people. You can't please them for nothing. They're going to be mad uh, no matter what the temperature is. They're going to be mad at the weather. doesn't matter what you know, their job they're doing. They're going to be angry, and that's their countless, that's their, that's, their, that's, their, uh, that's their outlook on life. And that's how they ooze that out in their speech and their words and their spirit to everyone around them. And they become almost, uh, you know, hazardous to everyone around them, uh, become anger, angry, uh, bitter at other people. Uh, un raise your hand if you understand that hurting people hurt people. Uh, people that have been hurt, unfortunately, in many cases, if they don't get, uh, get that uh, to the Lord uh, and get forgiveness and, and so forth, then they, they, they retaliate on other people. Uh, but verse number 22 speaks of an angry man, not just a man that gets angry, but an angry man. And that way of life, of course, when someone is angry, not only does it misinterpret or misrepresent the Lord Jesus Christ and what Christianity should be, uh, but it will, with the sin involved there, cause us to drift from Christ. And uh, when we get into this, I think that'll, uh, that'll it'll get more clear clarity there on that on that idea so but let's notice a few things about anger tonight in our bibles number one if you're taking notes i want you to notice the reasoning of anger the reasoning uh, behind anger or of anger in verse number 22 again we find that the subject here is an angry man now there's two reasons there's there's really two uh different positions on on biblical anger I believe. One, we're going to call this spiritual anger. Okay? Spiritual anger. You say, Pastor, I, you mean I can be angry and be spiritual about it? Yeah. You say, well, where's that at? Well, I'm going to show you in just a second. But there's a spiritual anger, and then there's the sinful anger. And we're going to look at those tonight under this, under this first topic. Now, the spiritual reason of anger, the Bible teaches us that there is a spiritual anger. And it's in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 26. And we won't take the time to turn there tonight, but you can perhaps write that scripture reference down. I encourage you to look at it later. The Bible says, be ye angry. Whoa! Some of you are, are listening right now. You're like, okay, okay. I can do that. I have a hard time doing the loving and forgiving and the telling others about Christ. But hey, I can be angry. What does the Bible say? Be ye angry, Ephesians 4, 26. 
Be ye angry, but it doesn't stop there. I'm sorry to say, for many of you, it doesn't stop there. Be ye angry and sin not. Now, that puts a different spin on it. Have you ever tried to be angry and not sin? It's almost impossible. Most of the time that we're angry, there's going to be some sin with that. Maybe a wrong thought, maybe a wrong word, maybe a wrong feeling, a wrong spirit, a retaliation, and etc., etc., etc. When we're mad, we sin. But God says to be angry, but don't sin when you're doing it. Be ye angry and sin not. It goes on, Ephesians 4, 26, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Don't go to bed mad. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. My pastor, I don't know why he told me, but he always said, don't go uh, to bed, don't, go, don't lay your head on your pillow and be mad at your wife. Get it right. And I, I think there's some wisdom. I haven't figured out all the details of that, but there's some wisdom in that. If, you, if you're, and by the way, there's, a, there's scripture, you know, husbands, don't be bitter against your wife. Because why? Your prayers can be hindered. Wow. And so, uh, you know, let's make sure that our hearts are right with our spouse specifically for sure about that. But the Bible teaches us, again, the spiritual anger. Be ye angry. Now, let me give you an, an example here of what we're talking about. And you can turn, if you want to, to Mark chapter 3, verse number 5. And we're going to find that Jesus was angry. Jesus was angry, of course, not too long ago. We talked about how he went into the temple and he overturned the, the, those who were cheating people out of money with the uh, sacrifices. They would use the sacrifice in the temple. And no doubt Jesus became angry there. But I want us to notice one in particular uh, that specifically mentions a verse in Mark chapter 3, verse 5, that specifically mentions Jesus looking upon people with anger. Now, while we're turning Mark 3, 5, we need to understand, did Jesus sin? Not one time did Jesus sin. Not one time. You say, Pastor, do you truly believe the Bible when it says he was sinless that that is true? Yes. He was God manifest in the flesh. He never did wrong. He never, even as a preteen, never backtalked his parents. I believe that with all of my heart. He never sinned. And here in Mark chapter 3, verse number 5, the Bible says, And when he had looked round about on them with what? Some of you turn there. What does it say? With what? Anger. So Jesus is looking upon people with anger, being grieved. It goes on to say, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts. He saith unto the man, stretch forth thine hand, and he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. You can read the story later on. But I want us to understand that Jesus was angered, and he looked upon them with anger because they're hardened of their heart. Isn't that something that has happened all throughout Scripture with Israel, all throughout the Old Testament? They would harden their hearts towards God with a spirit of unbelief. God says, I want you to trust me, I want you to believe me, and they would harden their heart. God would recall it. They would harden their heart with a spirit of unbelief. They could not go into the promised land at Kadesh Barnea when God told them to because they had a hardened heart. And even in Jesus' day and even today, we experience people with hardened heart. They have that spirit of unbelief. They will not trust the Lord. And I put myself in that category. And sometimes we, we, we have to keep that heart soft. That's where our Bible reading and prayer time comes in. And our worship to the Lord, our spiritual songs we take in on a regular basis soften, help soften that heart on a regular basis. Because it's so easy for that heart to get hard and callous and cold and hardened. And Jesus become angry with these people that did not believe that he was the Messiah. And so Jesus became angry with that. Now again, Jesus is perfect. He's sinless, yet he became angry. And so we understand that we can have, we can be angry. As a matter of fact, God tells us to be angry and sin not. So we, like Christ, can become angry. Uh, what does that mean then? Uh, we are to become angry as a result of sin, but not sin and becoming angry. So we, we are to become angry at sin. And the effects of sin, but not sin in becoming angry. So in other words, when I hear of murder, you know what that does? 
that bothers me. I become angry about that, not at the person, but at the action. I become angry at the, the abuse that I hear. I become angry at the crime. You, you, you can categorize any time. I'm just going to sum it up with crime. But, but you, can, you can put any word in there when you have sin. We, we have to be careful not to be, not to be bitter at somebody because that's quickly what anger can co- turn into, isn't it? And so God says you can be angry, but don't sin. So if I become angry and I become bitter, then I'm, I'm not doing what God told me to do. And, but it's good to become angry at sin. As Jesus became angry at sin, they're hardened hearts of unbelief. Um, it, it helps to establish brokenness. Allow that, br- allow that anger in your heart not to become bitterness, but to become broken for the situation. Uh, allow that anger over the, the misfortunate situation. Allow yourself to become f- frustrated in your heart with that, but immediately allow that anger that you're sensing to turn into a brokenness to where you have a broken heart over the situation and not a hardened heart over the situation. Is everybody with me tonight? So when we look at our government leaders and they make us angry because of their wicked and just crazy decisions sometimes, we totally do not agree with, totally against Bible principle, then what, what is my proper response? Be angry, sin not. Well, that's, hey, listen, abortion makes me angry. Let's just be honest. But I have to be careful that I do not become bitter about that because that just that's just that's hurting myself, right? That is not helping the situation. But if I allow that anger to become a brokenness and I become praying for that situation, then it turns that anger becomes productive, you see. So allow that anger not to become bitter. Be angry, don't sin. Don't allow it to become bitter, become broken. And, and learn to have a burden over that situation. I don't know what causes you to be angry, but when you see things that are happening that are against your, your traditional values, against biblical, let's, let's, let's have some framework here, biblical values against the Word of God, yes, it's good to become angry, but immediately allow that to turn into brokenness and a burden about that individual or certain situation. So there's the spiritual anger. There's reason to be angry. There's the spiritual anger, but then there's the sinful uh, anger. And this is again in verse number 22. This is no doubt the sinful anger in verse number 22 because it's an angry man. It's his perspective on life. It's who he is. Every time you run into him on the grocery store, this guy in Proverbs chapter 22, 29, verse 22, he's angry. You could give him a... I, I had somebody tell me several years ago, I've never forgot it. I thought it was just the most unique statement, one of the most unique statements I've ever heard. He said, Pastor, he said, you can't make everybody happy. He said, it wasn't this church. He said, Pastor, you can't make everybody happy. Everybody's happy here. <laughs> Not always, but anyway, uh, sometimes it's me, you know. And uh, uh, he said, Pastor, he said, you can't make everybody happy. He said, sometimes you give people a million dollars in cash. And he said, they'll complain because they have to carry it home. Don't raise your hand if you know anybody like that. Don't, okay. But I think we all do. And anger is a part of life. But this man in Proverbs 29, 22, he's an angry man. And this would involve a, a regular resort and handling problems and issues. Anytime a problem comes, and by the way, every day, in, in most cases for most of us, there's situations that come up that become problems if we're not careful really quickly. And we, become, we can very easily become angry about that situation instead of trying to figure out how to handle that correctly in a spiritual manner. And this would also involve retaliation. Now I want you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. And this is really, I'm going to ask you to turn with me a couple times tonight. Some of them I'm just going to give you and encourage you to write it down. But some of them I really want you to turn with me. And I want you to hold your place at this one. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 31. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 31. I'm going to try to turn. I've got a cheat sheet wrote up here. I've got it wrote down, but I'm going to try to turn with you. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 31. The Bible says... Let all bitterness and wrath 
and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Now we'll come back to that in a minute, so don't forget about Ephesians 4.31. But the Bible speaks of being angry here, and the same phrase, the same sentence is talking about evil speaking. In many cases, our anger is towards somebody. Unfortunately, sometimes people become angry at God. And there's an evil speaking. Proverbs, Ephesians 4.31, there's an evil speaking that comes forth from the anger. The bitterness, the wrath, the clamor. It's all in this big pot of nastiness uh, that's in our heart and mind with, with anger. And so there's the spiritual anger becoming angry at sin but quickly allowing that to turn into brokenness in our heart and a burden about the situation. We pray about it and see if there's anything scripturally we can do to help the situation. But then there's the sinful anger, which is no doubt Proverbs 29, 22. Uh, a regular resorting of, you know, when the things just don't go our way. And we all deal with that because it's natural. What, what, however you react in that anger, everybody gets mad. And get angry... But understand that that is not a good thing. It's a sinful thing. Uh, which brings us to the next point, And that is, number two, the results of anger. The results of anger. So there's reason to be anger. There's, there's, there's spiritual anger. Uh, there's, there's sinful anger. The sinful anger is really what we're talking about tonight for the most part. And again, verse number 22 tells us two different results. In Proverbs 29, 22, there's two different results from being angry in a sinful manner. Two different results. Can you see them? The first one is an angry man stirs up strife. An angry man stirs up strife. I'm gonna, let's turn, please, to Acts chapter number 19. We're going to look at an, a, a perfect example of what happens when somebody becomes very angry. In Acts chapter number 19, I'm going to turn with you. Acts chapter number 19. An angry man, in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 22, specifically says, an angry man, one who is angry, he, it's a sinful thing to him, stirreth up strife. He stirs something up. An angry man causes problems. An angry man, a lot of times the Bible uses the word man, and sometimes it's referring to... Uh, uh, a, a male gender, you know, and I think scripture in its context can, can tell you what that is. For example, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, we learn the qualifications of a pastor and deacon, and we also learn about the husband of one wife. Well, that tells me right there, it's, it's, a, it's a male gender. But sometimes when the Bible space of man is talking about mankind in general, and so understand that ladies can be mad too. An angry man. Stirs up strife. Now, Acts chapter number 19 and verse 23. We find here the life of the Apostle Paul. And he's preaching in the city of Ephesus. And in, right before verse number 23, revival breaks out. To the degree that people have these wizard books and all this Bible. Look in verse, I'll tell you what, let's look in verse number, um, verse number 19. Of Acts 19, many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. And, the, and so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So Paul, God is using him to see a great revival breaking out in the city of Ephesus. But when you, all, when you have a revival, sometimes the devil, well all the time, the devil's not just going to stand sit back in his recliner and say, well, let's just fan that flame of good things. He's going to say, let's see what we can hinder, how we can hinder that. By the way, anytime God does something, the Satan's going to try to stick his foot in the door. Verse 23, we're going to find out what Satan did about this revival in Ephesus. And the, at the, and the same time, the same time, we just read about this great uh, working here of people in their hearts, turning to the Lord and the same time there arose no small stir about that way. In other words, people got big, really mad about it. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, 
brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. In other words, this guy was making a lot of money because he was selling things that people were using to worship this goddess Diana, okay, and not the true God. And now they're saying, we're turning to Jesus. Guess what? I don't have to buy those little idols that Demetrius and his craftsmen are making. You know, why, make, make, why spend the money on that when I have a Savior and a salvation for free? Ditch this stuff. Well, guess what? Demetrius is making that stuff. What's that mean to his wallet? If you don't buy his stuff, he don't have peanut butter and jelly on the table. So he gets mad. It's all in the Greek right here. In, okay, I'm just picking. Okay, We're just trying to read between the lines here. It's, it's not in the Greek. Verse number 25. Whom he called to gather with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. We make these little idols, we make this stuff that these people are buying to worship Diana. Verse 26, Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands, so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. I think he's exaggerating a little bit. I think he's just worried about his money. Verse 28, And when they heard these sayings, notice the next phrase, they were full of what? Wrath. And cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion. That's what anger breeds. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, the men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, he rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Verse 32, some therefore cried one thing and some the other, for the assembly was confused. And the more part, in other words, the greatest percentage of them, knew not wherefore they were come together. Now you can read the latter part of it when you get home, but this event has, has boiled down to a revival happening and really Satan working behind the scenes here. But Demetrius is getting mad because he's losing his money because everybody's turning to Jesus. They're not buying their stuff from Demetrius anymore. And so he gets all his craftsman buddy and he says, Listen, this guy Paul is costing us our jobs. Let's do away with him and every Christian that we can find. And let's take them into the theater and uh, feed them to the lions, set them on fire, burn them at the stake. Let's get rid of these guys because if we don't, our jobs and our families are at jeopardy. And what, but what I want you to understand is they were full of wrath. This angry man, Demetrius, has stirred the pot. He's stirring up strife. Proverbs 29, 22, an angry man stirreth up strife. Strife. The results of anger, if you have anger in your home, you're going to have strife. You're going to have conflict. You're going to have problems. You're going to have arguments on a constant basis. We can't allow the anger into our life. We're going somewhere with it. But this is, this is a big result of anger in our life. Not only does anger breed strife, contention... But it also, verse number 22 of Proverbs 29, a furious man, which furious anger, wrath, a furious man aboundeth in transgression. Again, we've mentioned transgression referring to sin there. So a, a, an angry person is not only going to stir up strife and confusion, but an angry man is also abounding in sin. The bitterness that it creates and the resentment that it creates is going to cause them to abound in living in sin. Now, I want you to turn with me one other passage. You don't have to. I'm going to read it to you. But I highly encourage you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 34. And we're going to look at one more example of what happens when people get mad and a result of that. So we saw Demetrius in Acts chapter 19. But in Genesis chapter 34, 
we're going to find two of God's people that get mad by the name of Levi and Simeon. In Genesis chapter 34, Genesis chapter 34, and I want you to look with me in verse number 1. I'm gonna, I've got to punch, punch in an overtime here. Not overtime, overdrive. Got scared some of you, didn't I? I didn't mean to say that. All right, Genesis chapter 34. I'm going to read quickly and try to slow down at the parts up when we want to emphasize. I want you to stay focused and get involved in this story. Genesis chapter 34, verse number 1. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob. So you got Abraham, right? You got Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And Jacob had all of these, you know, Levi, Simeon, Joseph, Benjamin, all of these, what we know today is the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? We're talking about Jacob's children. Jacob went out to see the daughters of the land, and when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. And his soul clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel and spake kindly unto the damsel. And Shechem spake unto his do- father Hamor, saying, Get me this damsel to wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah his daughter. Now his sons were with his cattle in the field, and Jacob held his peace until they were come. And Hamor the father of Shechem went out unto Jacob to commune with him. And the sons of Jacob came out of the field when they heard it. And the men were grieved, and they were very wroth. Because he had wrought folly in Israel in lying with Jacob's daughter, which thing ought not to be done. Paul's, let's understand what's happening here. Jacob has all these sons, they're brothers. He also has this daughter. His daughter goes out to find some friends and to some other people in another town. And while she's there, there's a guy that sees her and he says, you're pretty. And he lays with her, Okay, commits an immoral act with her. And uh, he says to his daddy, uh, the prominent people here, Daddy, I want her, get, I want to marry her. So his daddy goes to Jacob, this girl's daddy, and says, My son wants to marry your daughter. And, he, and, and, and the boys, Levi and Simeon, all these boys heard it. And they realized what was done to their sister. This guy had raped her or whatever. And so they got really mad, as, as some of us would do. For sake of time, let's just, let me just tell you what's happened here. And as we read on, we learn that this guy, this, this guy wants to marry Jacob's uh, daughter. And so they say, uh, they, they, they make a deal with them. These, these sons of Jacob, Levi and Simeon, are kind of heading this thing up. And they say, well, we'll make a deal with you. Uh, you have to get circumcised because we have to be circumcised. You have to be circumcised if you want to marry our daughter um, and marry our sister. And so he says, yeah, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I want to marry your sister. I love her. And so Levi and Simeon, they say, okay, uh, all the guys in your town have to get circumcised. And so it's a surgical procedure, of course. And so the, all these guys, all these men, uh, have to get circumcised. And I think it's the third day uh, that they're recovering from this minor operation, this procedure that just took place. Simeon and Levi, they come in there with swords and massacre the whole town to get revenge of what they did, this one guy did to their sister. They said, we're not taking it. But I want you to understand the sad part of this. Um, Look with me in Genesis chapter number... I intended to read that whole chapter, but for sake of time, we didn't read it. But in Genesis chapter 49, you you don't have to turn there. You can if you want just a few pages over from where we are. In Genesis chapter 49, we find Jacob is on his deathbed. And Jacob is giving the blessings to all of his children and giving some prophecy about what's going to come of them and their life. And I want you to notice in verse number 5, Jacob, he's, one of his daughters, has, has, this has become of her, and, but his sons got revenge. 
And it was a, and it was a reproach upon the family. But look in verse number 5. Jacob says this about Simeon and Levi, who kind of headed this thing up. Simeon and Levi are brethren. In verse number 5 of Genesis 49, Jacob says on his deathbed, Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. Verse 6, O my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly, mine honor, be not thou united. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. But notice in verse 7, Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. So here, their anger, even though they were getting revenge... Uh, it's being denounced here because of what they did and as the, the results of their wrath and their anger were so cruel that Jacob here says it mentions it on his deathbed. Uh, he did not forget about their anger and their cruelty and their wrath. We're talking about the results of our anger. Can we just sum it up with this? In the, in the area of sinful anger, there is nothing good that comes out of being angry. It stirs up strife. It causes major problems with other people that could have been prevented. Now we're going somewhere real quickly, and I'm almost done. You've listened so well. Number three, quickly, uh, let's look at this really quickly, and I want to get done here tonight if we can. Relationships with anger. Let's look at this. We're going to get off key, just, uh, just off the, the beaten path here just a minute and talk about relationships with anger. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse number 24, the Bible says, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. If there's an angry man in your life or angry woman in your life, don't you say, so, well, it's my spouse. Well, you need to pray for them. Okay, don't use that as a, term, as a way of separation. I don't think I would use that and say, well, I've got to get away. Well, I guess it all depends. That's between you and the Lord and all of that. But, and, and again, I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there, but I, I wouldn't use that as a grounds of saying, well, I'm going to get away from you and, and cut this off. But again, use that in your life for how God allows you to, but make no friendship with an angry man. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. Now, notice number four and number five, and I'm done. The rebuke of anger. And I know we've, we've went a lot of places, but we're going we're gonna to narrow it down in Ephesians 4.31, and we're going to close out here. Number four, notice what God says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Again, he rebukes anger. And we want to emphasize these words, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. Be put away from you. So God says, get the anger out of your life. And may we understand the reproach that anger could bring in someone's life. James chapter 1 verse number 19, the Bible says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to what? Wrath. Slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. And again, may we understand the reproach that anger could bring. If you walk around and you say, I'm from Temple Baptist Church, and you're handing out outreach cards left and right and say, we have the best pastor in the world, and you turn around at the grocery store and bite somebody's head off and cursing and everything else, what kind of testimony are you saying about Temple Baptist Church? And further than that, the Lord Jesus Christ as a child of God. So we've got, you say, I can't control my anger. Let's look at what God says. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Be put away from you. We, we've, got to be, we've got to understand that being obedient to God's word is very important. And we've got to get that anger out of our lives. And we can't cover it up to say, I have anger issues. You may have anger issues. I understand, I understand we've become angry. I understand we're under a lot of stress in these last days before Christ returns. I realize that a lot of things just make us mad here and there. And I understand that. But for the sake of the gospel, for the reputation of Christianity, for the cause of the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
Get that anger out of us. May we understand the rep- representation that we could bring. Verse number 32 of Ephesians chapter 4, it says, And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. You say, Pastor, you just don't understand. I have a right to be mad at them because you don't know what they did to me. Let's read Ephesians 4, 32 once again. And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Don't you think if God has forgiven us for being a sinner and all that we've done and how that we were the cause of Him going to the cross, if He can forgive us, that we can forgive somebody else? And so for the cause of Christ, for the cause of the gospel, the representation of Temple Baptist Church, may God help us to to put that anger from us. Uh, Let's not be a reproach upon the name of Christ. Number five, and I'm done. And all God's people said... Yeah. (laughs) Look at verse number 31, 32 one more time. And this is the last point, replacement of anger. The replacement of anger. You know, I've always taught you don't just get something out of your life. You don't take the rock and roll and the the crazy uh, music out of your life and just leave it open. You put something else there. You, you take some bad stuff out of your life, but you, you put good stuff back in it. You can't just, you know, if you're going to lose weight, you know, and I'm, I'm a good one to talk about this, but you, you, if you want to lose weight, you can't just stop eating, period. You know, you meet these people and you're like, yeah, I haven't been eating in four days. And I'm like, what, you got to eat sometime. You know, that might work for you for a short while, but it's not going to come out good for you in the end, you know. You got to eat some point. So you don't, if you're going to lose weight, you know, you don't just say, I'm going to eliminate every piece of food. You just got to get out the bad stuff and put in the good stuff. You know, switch out the sneakers bars for some salad. Josh Bowles, amen, you know. I've got to do that. But um, notice the replacement. I'm thinking about sneakers bars. Replacement of anger. <laughs> this passage here gives us the reminder that our, our anger often comes from a situation with somebody else. Our anger often comes because somebody makes us mad. Let's just be honest. And you say, how do you know that? Because it says in verse 32, right after it says, put that anger, that malice, that bitterness, get it out of your life. Right after that, it says, forgiving one another. You see. So most of the time our anger comes because somebody's just not got their head screwed on right. Because somebody's made us mad. Because somebody's irritated us. Because somebody's made us upset. But can I encourage us each one to replace that anger with kindness. Be kind one to another. And you say, Pastor, that's just really simple. Well, God's word is just really simple. Trust and obey for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus. Our problem is we don't obey and we don't trust. But if we'll trust and obey God's word, be kind, replace that anger with kindness. Understand the cross, Jesus was kind to you and I by dying for us on the cross. Replace that anger in verse number 32 with a tender heart. And again, one thing to keep that heart soft in our life is when we worship the Lord with some good gospel music. And I'm not talking about stuff that's going to make you swing and everything else in your car seat. I'm talking about stuff that's going to make you weep and cry and turn your heart to the Lord. Replace that anger with kindness. Replace that anger with a tender heart, as we find in verse 32. And replace that anger with forgiveness. And we've got, we cannot forget that last phrase of verse number 32. As God... For Christ's sake, have forgiven you. We cannot forget. That is the big, that is, that is so crucial. Because if you and I forget about God and His love for us and His forgiveness to us, then you'll forget how to forgive and love others. But if we're reminded of the love and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ on a regular basis, then it will become so much easier to forgive others. Oh, pastor, you don't understand what they're saying to me on social, about me on social media. Pastor, you don't understand what they said to me in my face. Pastor, well, let's remember Calvary. Let's remember what they did to Jesus. I think me and you are okay. If he did that for me, 
surely I can forgive others and be kind to others regardless of what they do to me. You, I, it's hard. It's hard. Man, you want to... I know. I'm human just like you are. But for the cause of the gospel and for the cause of Christianity, for the cause of Jesus Christ and what he's done for us because he's forgiven us, may God help us replace that anger with tender hardness, with forgiveness, with kindness for one another. Let's all bow our heads and close our eyes tonight. A lot of material. We probably could have broken this up to two or three nights. We can drift away from the Lord because when we become angry and become that angry person in Proverbs chapter 29, we become an angry person. We abound in that transgression. We live in that sin. And when we sin in our hearts and lives, that's going to draw, that's going to take us away in our fellowship with the Lord. We've got to be careful with that. And if that anger comes in our lives and it's taken us away in our sweet fellowship with the Lord, we've got to get that under control. Let's all stand together with heads bowed and eyes are closed. If you're here tonight and you need to be saved tonight, it'll be a wonderful night to trust Christ as your personal Savior. We're going to play for just a moment. And as you have a need, would you come tonight as they play softly on the instruments tonight with heads bowed and eyes are closed. Perhaps you want to pray right there in your seat. Lord, help me. You know, if God, the Holy Spirit, shows you if you have any bitterness or anger in your heart, your life towards somebody else, we have resentment towards somebody. Get that right. Lord, forgive me. I, I've been taught this all my life, and I've, I've learned it works. The Bible works. That pray for those who hate you and use you and pray for your enemies. Love them. If you have somebody in your life that's caused you to become angry, one of the great ways to have a tender heart towards them is to pray for that individual. And that will help tremendously to just take away that anger. Father, we love you tonight. Help us in this area of our Christian lives. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated tonight. We're going to go over our prayer request, and then we'll be dismissed. And I'm trying to be mindful of the time. And, uh, but we'll be dismissed hopefully on regular time tonight. Let me give you just a couple before we take outspoken prayer requests in the auditorium. Let's pray for our shut-ins and uh, our missionaries, of course, as we do, normally do, our country and Israel and our military. Let's pray for our services on Sunday. I'm really looking forward to a great day in the house of the Lord on Sunday. And so let's pray for that. Then also Wanda Michaels, uh, Ruby Cain. Connie Del Pardo, I got to speak to her via text the other day, and she's looking forward to hopefully coming back to church sometime soon. Larry Smith, continue to pray for him. Uh, Bonnie Smith, Betty Hale, uh, Trinity Elms. Uh, Sarah Bellamy will be having a procedure coming up next month. Pray for her with that. Uh, Tootie Farrington. Uh, then also Miss Holly, Miss Christy Holly's dad. Uh, we've learned that he has uh, some cancer. And I just learned tonight that um, he received a good report that it's not spread anywhere else and they're hopefully going to be able to take care of what's there. But do pray for him with that. Sarah Hawks has continued to pray for her uh, with uh, what I understand some cancer treatments. I don't know a whole lot of details there, but what I understood from her. Novella Moore continued to pray for her. Beverly Smith, let's remember Miss Beverly with some tests and things that she's taken in her hip. Randy Smith, uh, Dot Adams, uh, and then uh, Melanie Williamson with cancer treatments. Uh, Charles Petit, continue to pray for him if you will please. Uh, Gary Bartley, uh, Bunny Manning's grandson Alex. Uh, Lawrence Miller, I got to speak on the phone with Patricia yesterday. Uh, Lawrence is in hospice, he's not doing well. And so I'm going to try to get by and see him hopefully sometime soon when it's a good time for them. And so uh, do pray for them, if you will, as well. Does anybody else have any outspoken prayer requests? We'll start on this side as we normally do. Okay, Brad? Okay. Okay, let's pray for Crystal with pink eye and her sister with kidney situation. Linda? Okay, good. Praise the Lord. Okay, so Novella's home. Just an update there.
Okay, pray for Tootie's test on Friday. Okay, anybody else? Okay, Miss Donna. Okay, good. So pray for. She's sick. Okay, and she's still in Florida. Oh, she. Okay, so let's pray for Ann Jackson, sick, and also Miss uh, Donna's family. Anybody else over here? Okay, over here. Okay. Okay, Miss Kelly. Pray for Miss Kelly's family at this situation. Anybody else over here? Okay, over here. Okay, and Miss Beverly. Good, praise the Lord. Okay, so we're grateful, Miss Beverly. Uh, received a good report regarding her cancer scan, so we're thankful to the Lord for that. Does anybody else, anybody else have an outspoken prayer request? Matt? Okay, let's pray for this co-worker tonight. All right, if you have an unspoken prayer request, would you raise your hand tonight? And let's remember these prayer requests as much as we can. There's so many needs. And uh, just when you, when you raise your hand, you know, you're saying, Lord, you know what I've got. And sometimes we can't mention it. And uh, some, so many things we go through are personal. And uh, you just can't share that with everybody, but God knows what that is. Well, let's pray together as a church family one more time tonight and close in prayer tonight for these needs tonight. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you so much for this wonderful, wonderful church. I love these people dearly with all my heart. I realize everyone is not able to be here on Wednesday nights uh, with work and school and so many things going on. I realize that, but I'm grateful for those who have made the sacrifice. And Father, I pray tonight that the fellowship and the camaraderie, the encouragement from one with another have been in helpful. The Word of God throughout the campus tonight have been helpful. And Father, tonight I pray that you would help us implement and apply your Word to our life in every way, from the nursery all the way up to the oldest member tonight. And Father, I pray that you'd help all of our church family needs. Father, the needs are great. Some are going through cancer treatments. Father, some are have been in and out of the hospital. Some are discouraged. Some are heartbroken. And I think about the Dean Eaton family tonight. I pray that you'd help them with that funeral yesterday. I pray that you'd help so many families, Father, who are going through so many things right now. I pray that you give them wisdom, guidance, leading, wit, strength, and help uh, emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, financially. Help our people, their marriages, and their, as they try to raise their children, as our children go back to school. Father, we ask you to give them safety and protection. And Father, we ask that you would Help all these prayer requests, Father, every one of them. I pray that you'd answer each one according to your will. Those who were outspoken, those who had their hand raised for an unspoken, you know what the need is, and I pray that you'd intervene there. I pray that you'd help our country, Israel, our missionaries, so many different needs, Father, that we read off tonight. Bless our services on Sunday. I pray for your power, Father, upon the choir, the singing, uh, the, the preaching, the teaching. Father, I pray for your power, that you work and move in hearts and Father, that people will be drawn to Jesus, that people will be saved, people will be encouraged, people will be strengthened, equipped, and helped in the Christian life. And Father, we'll thank you for what you do in all of these, these areas. We love you tonight, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's all stand together tonight. I'm so grateful that you're here, and I love you so much. We're grateful that you're here tonight. Let's, uh, 
Don't forget about the sign-up sheet for the ladies' meeting and I think the kayaking. I think there's the two main sign-up sheets out here in the entryway tonight. Grab some outreach cards. Let's be a witness for the Lord this week as we go out. I love you. God bless you. Turn around, shake a hand or two with a smile. Thank you for coming. You're dismissed.